Well, here it is. This is how we're going to be getting out to our remote cabin in the summertime. We bought ourselves a nice boat. This is a river boat. It's specially made for going in very shallow water and that's what we need because we're going to be running a river for about 60 miles to get out to our cabin. We actually purchased this boat in February, February 2nd, I believe. And today is May 27th. So we were very anxious to get it. it. Took a long time to get it. They had to get it shipped up here to Alaska. They had to get it built for us. They did a couple special things for us and we finally have it. We're very excited to have this thing. We cannot wait to get out on the river and try it out. You may remember we already had a boat. That boat was a lot different. That was a 14 foot John boat. This one is 18 feet long and it's 60 inches wide. So it's a lot bigger of a boat and carry a lot more weight. Our old boat only had a five horsepower prop motor. This one has a 65 horsepower four stroke jet motor. Should be no problem getting out to our cabin with us, the dogs and all of our gear. The way we kind of had this thing set up was we wanted just two seats, one for Errol and I. We got the one right here that has storage underneath and then we got the driver seat slash station back there. When you're actually driving this thing, you, you're gonna be standing up. So it's a little bit different of a setup than we're used to. We have a lot of open space in here and that's kind of what we wanted for putting extra fuel, our totes, the dogs and a bed for them. Any gear or any food, any supplies we're gonna be hauling out to the cabin is all gonna go by this boat if we're going out there in the summertime. So we wanted lots of room in there to put all of our stuff. It has a jet unit on there. And the way it works is this motor started out as a 90 horsepower, but when they take the prop off of it and they put a jet on there, it lowers the horsepower down. So we're sitting at 65 horsepower right now. And you can run very, very shallow water in this boat, about three inches if you're going fast. So we'll see, we'll see what we can do. We also had these trim tabs put on there. These are like automatic adjustable trim tabs and these help you just kind of get on plane a little bit faster and allow you to go in a little bit more of shallow water. So the motor, uh, this one is a four stroke. Our old one was two stroke. So this one's a lot more fuel efficient, a lot more power and it's a four cylinder motor. So it's got four cylinders in there. The boat came with one 12 gallon gas tank, which is right here and they're kind of removable. We ended up buying another one. So we have 24 gallons of gas we can hold. And then I think on our first trip out to the river, we're gonna pack an extra five gallons of gas just cause we don't really know how much fuel we're gonna burn in this thing yet until we actually get out there. So this is how you operate this thing. Standing up right here, you got your controls, forward, reverse, neutral. We've got a couple charging ports, USB, and then your standard cigarette lighter. And we have a uh, bilge pump. I think that's what it's called. I think it's how you say it. And that basically just pumps water out if you get any water in the boat, which if you're coming in and out of the boat, you'll get water in here. As far as navigation, we were gonna get just a mountable unit, but we wanted both of us to be able to use the GPS. So if Ariel's driving and I'm sitting up there, I can look at the GPS or vice versa. So we ended up just ordering a small Garmin. I think it's got like a five or six inch screen. That hasn't come in yet. So hoping in another week or so we'll have that and that can kind of help us navigate the river. We've got under seat storage in this front one right here and we've got these really nice seats. So pretty cool little setup. These seats pop up like this and you know, they, they swivel all around. So really nice, comfortable seats. So these types of boats around here, they're really not just out cruising the lake type of pleasure boats. They're more like a tool, they're transportation, they're for utility. And that's basically how we have this thing set up, you know, just super simple. And we wanted to go with a new boat because we wanted something reliable. If you're out on that river, it's not like if you're on a snow machine and something happens where you can maybe walk out of there or, you know, get some help. If you're on that river, you know, you're on the water. So unless you're swimming out, you're pretty much stuck. We wanted to have a place to mount this extra fuel tank and we wanted to keep the weight forward. So I put in a couple hooks on the front, this fuel tank, We'll go right there and I got a strap that straps this on the front and then when that tank gets close to low or runs out we'll just switch them over and then today is going to be the maiden voyage of this boat. We got the dogs loaded up, we've got our fishing poles, got our net and a little bit of gear. We're going to take it out on the lake since this is our first time operating this boat. This is actually our first time operating a river boat so we're going to have kind of a learning curve. And we also need to go and put two hours on this motor of the break-in period. We've got a few things we need to do. We have a storm coming in but it's gonna rain the next few days. So I think now is our only chance to get this boat out and go have a little bit of fun. We're gonna do some fishing too. Come on, Bo, come on, Bo. Oh, crap. So Bandit's been really excited to take the boat out. As soon as we brought this thing home a few days ago, he's been like out here in the boat, around the boat. He doesn't wanna be left behind. The dogs have a lot of experience riding in boats. Our old boat, our other old boat, canoes. They absolutely love it, so. We're definitely bringing them. We'll throw a dog bed in there for them. All we have left to do is stop by the gas station. We've got to put some premium in this bad boy and we're heading out.
boat's running good. This motor, I cannot believe how smooth and quiet it is. We're used to our old little two-stroke one, so this is nice. We're gonna keep the RPMs for the manual uh, under 2,000, and we're gonna back it down, go up again, back it down. We're supposed to do that for about an hour or so. Cruise the lake, it's not too bad out here. We got some really nice life vests. Our old ones are just the regular traditional life vests. Kind of big and bulky and uncomfortable. And we want something that we can wear and be comfortable in. So we got these self-inflating ones. They have like a big CO2 cartridge in there. And to deploy this thing, you can either pull this little lever and it'll puff up and you'll have a life vest or it has an automatic feature. So if you happen to fall in the water or go swimming, uh, this thing has a little valve in there and it senses the water and it'll expand and you'll have a life vest. So really cool little life vest. Right, we are just variating our speed. It's gonna take an hour, so we're looking at the houses. This is a local lake, it's a pretty big one. Um, I believe it's a natural lake. It's really nice, it has rainbow and pike. A little bit harder to catch, but it's a good lake. So we'll see if we get this done. The break-in period, we'll go fishing for a little. Well, we've been cruising the lake in style. We hit an hour. Uh, we we're just going real slow. Like Ariel said, you just bring it up to 2000 RPMs. You bring it down, bring it up, bring it down. Vary the speed to break this motor in. Uh, now it's time to have a little more fun. We get to get the boat up on plane and that's kind of like up on step where, you, where you're kind of cruising. You're a little higher up in the water. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna bring it up well above 2000 RPMs, a little over half throttle. We're gonna get it up on plane. And then at that point, we kind of want to back it down to where we're just on plane and we're gonna leave the throttle there and we're gonna cruise around for another hour. All right, let's let her rip. Don't get the nicest days here all the time, even in the summer. Well, I guess it's not summer yet, but we're getting there. And uh, it's getting cold. Gotta get a jacket on, but we're gonna continue ripping around. This thing is smooth, loving it. Are we ready? Okay, look at this, look at slow. You don't, you get up on step slow, right? Just try it out. And it, back up. Take a pit stop here, one of these public use cabins that you can rent. There's no one here, so we're kind of just hanging out. We're about to hit our second hour of break-in, and after that point, there still is technically another eight hours of break-in uh, before the motor's totally broken in. And all that means in that last eight hours is you wanna just vary your speed. And if you are going full throttle, you only wanna stay in full throttle for five minutes max, and then you wanna kind of back it off, and then you can go full throttle again. So after the second hour here, we're pretty much good to go. This boat is a blast. It's extremely powerful, extremely smooth, spacious. It's pretty awesome. 
I'm not gonna lie. I don't think we've burned much fuel either. So this is kind of a good test out here today to see how much fuel we're gonna burn. We're only running it for two hours and we're not in the river, so we're not fighting a current. So, you know, there's also gonna be a, a learning curve once we get it out on the river. One thing I have noticed is I think next time we load this boat down with our gear, we're gonna put all the heavy stuff in the front because when we started to try to get on plane, I noticed that the front of the boat was a little higher up until one of us and the dog sat in the front. So looks like we're just gonna be tying our gear down on the front. But we're gonna go over to a cove that we like to fish and do a little fishing, see if we can catch some pike or a rainbow. Come on, boys. Oh yeah, get mud in the new boat. Bo! Oh yeah! All right, found a cool little mouth of a creek. Comes into the lake here. Let's see if we have any, any luck. I hooked into one. I don't know what it is. It's probably a pike. No, it's a pike. Yeah, it's a pike. It's a pike. It's a little guy. Nice little one. Come on, we gotta get the first fish in the boat. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yeah! Nice Woo! Nice. <laughs> this is gonna be the lucky boat. I already know it. So it's, it's a pretty nice size for eating. They're, this isn't huge. And uh, so we're gonna take them home. We're gonna eat them. Be nice to have some fresh fish. But actually the lake we're in, this is an invasive species. So you're not allowed to let these go live. You either have to kill them and take them or unfortunately you have to kill them and put them back in the water. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna kill them and we're gonna take them home and eat them. But we're gonna fish some more because we're in a really cool little spot here. Oh, I got like your twin. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's not a bad size. How come, he, how come he's not fighting? That's a, that's, that's like your twin. Nice, we have two for dinner tonight. Oh my gosh, that's a beauty. They're real fat. Cute little fatties, huh? Well, I don't have sunglasses anymore, unfortunately. Lost them a little bit earlier during our day. The biggest pike we've caught out of here once was, I think like two years ago, two summers ago, we caught maybe like a 26, maybe 27 inch pike. Really pretty, really awesome pike. We were seeing a lot of splashes. I think it's kind of picking up. Seems like the weather's getting a little nicer. I know there's a lot of fish in there, but I don't know how many we really want to take home. So they're biting like every single time. Pretty excited, we got another one. We haven't had pike in a while. So I'm pretty excited. This is a nice one. I think this one may be the biggest one. Yeah, this is, this is really cool pike fishing. It's uh. We're throwing these lures in there to the spoons. I switched to a spoon, that's what Harold has on. And you can actually see these things like sharks. I like the weeds. Coming after them. Yeah, we're just fishing these weeds. We found a nice cove. I don't think we've actually fished this cove here before. No. No, but we're getting some, getting some fish in the new boat. This is awesome. That's a, that's splashing. These are pretty big ones. Very cool, four fish. We're doing good out here, this is awesome. Well, I think four fish is gonna be more than enough for us. It's awesome, we got something to eat. Um, we're in a really weedy area right now. I'm moving the boat around here. It feels like it's lacking power, so I'm pretty sure it's got some weeds stuck in there. I'm gonna turn the motor up, see if we can get them out real quick, and then we're gonna keep on cruising around the lake. We got some more breaking in to do. All right, we got the weeds out. Performing well now. Okay, fun day on the lake. Really fun time in this boat. We just hit our two hour mark. So at this point, we could pretty much unleash the beast. We're probably gonna cruise around the lake maybe one more time, but then we're gonna go ahead and load up. This storm is coming in for sure. It's starting to get pretty dark out here. We're gonna head home and Gonna cook some pike for dinner. See you guys there. Woo -hoo. Okay, we're making good dinner. We're frying up this pike. We've breaded it. I marinated it earlier. And we've got some oil and a little bit of butter over there. This is gonna be delicious. We had a great time out in the boat today. We are gonna go out and test it out a little bit more, get a little more comfortable with it. Probably hit the river a couple times before we actually make the long 60 mile journey out to the cabin. 
But sooner or later, we will make it out to the cabin on that boat and we really look forward to it. Let me get this pike frying up. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Really good. What does it taste like? Just good fish? Um, I'm smelling this now. Hot. Very hot. Oh, yeah. Just a ton of fish. Look at this. Oh my god. You don't Little need chunks. This. Just all over here. Some of that uh, pickled. Oh my gosh, that's on. We are gonna eat. This is the pickled fireweed shoots and watermelon shoots on top of the fiddleheads. Cheers to an epic summer. Yeah, that's good. It's really good. Have you tried this? No, but I want to. Really good. That pickled stuff. That's amazing. Like you said, cucumber and melon. That is so good. Here's to more boat adventures. Yep, many, many more. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Oh. Do you like it? I mean, I like the fiddleheads. It's so good. It's like fish and chips. I want to try with the chives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, look at some fish with it. I really like this stuff. Normally I would not, like you said the other day, when you're foraging greens, you wouldn't think you'd like eat it like this. Or that want a lot of them, yeah. Tastes like a cucumber melon hybrid. It got stronger. Beautiful meal. The apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. made it amazing.